Sega. Set during the 19th century, The Fall of the Samurai offers a largely different gaming experience to the original Total War Shogun 2. It's full of explosives, pyrotechnics, it's got lots of fun new units like torpedo ships and Gatling guns. Ships explode left and right, uh, get armor penetrating shells. We have this huge clash between uh, the modern and the traditional. Effectively, this is a war for the soul of Japan in the modern world. Torpedoes in the water, sir! In The Fall of the Samurai, the campaign map has been extended both further north to Hokkaido and to New Island provinces in the south. Ultimately, at the end of the Boshin War, the shogunate forces were chased by the imperial forces into Hokkaido, forming the Izo Republic, which was uh, kind of the last stand of the shogunate forces. The campaign map has been reimagined to reflect the new time period, with steam railways making their first appearance in a total war game. Developing a rail network allows swift movement of troops and agents. You know, if you've got a Gatling gun factory, say, in, in one province at the end of the railway line, you know, within a turn you can get him right where he's needed at the front line. But be wary of enemies sabotaging or blockading your stations. My favourite agent really, I think, is the foreign veteran agent. So that's kind of an American or British or French foreign veteran that you bring in to improve the recruitment of your troops, kind of drill your troops, train them more effectively. And they can also challenge other, other agents to single combat. Well, I will defend my honor. The American, British, and French nations play an important part in the struggle for victory. Japan was rich in natural resources and obviously trade opportunity. Um, the Americans were very keen on tapping this potential. You know, a bunch of Americans turn up and say, you will trade with us um, and um, back it up with some gunboats. The construction of trading districts for Western powers will give you access to devastating units and advanced technology. The Industrial Revolution and the Enlightenment that took many, many decades in the West gets condensed into two or three or four short, short decades in Japan. You know, in about 30 years, it's one of the most advanced industrial nations in the world. Instead of having to rely on expert swordsmen and people who you have very few of, you can train anybody to fire a Gatling gun. But the cost of modernization is great. You know, modernization means mechanized factories. It means um, the breakdown of traditional social values and social uh, connections. Industrial development can breed discontent in the people and reduces the effectiveness of traditional weapons and units, such as samurai. A lot of people became more and more angry with what they saw as increasing foreign domination. If modernization unhappiness becomes too much of a, a big issue, a region can suffer a samurai rebellion, uh, which was something that actually happened in the 1870s, uh, where a bunch of disgruntled samurai decided that all this westernization was no good and uh, rose up against their masters. I thought it was quite nice. The dynamic clash between the old traditions and the new industrial world is at the heart of the fall of the samurai. Like all Total War games, there's no wrong path to victory. Make your own choices, build your legacy, triumph, and dominate Japan.